الطبيب بشو رأي هدية بتقبل أخلو بشينا Good evening, doctor. Are you are with us? Good evening, uh, Sydney, Australia. Good early morning, USA, <laughs> Pennsylvania. And welcome to our show, doctor. How are you? Well, it's wonderful to be with you again. I got a wonderful uh, text this morning as I was uh, having breakfast at 4 a.m., getting ready to see your smiling face from Christopher <laughs> D. Oh. And uh, telling me that you delivered his books and he wants to buy more for his family and friends and he's already finished chapter three. So that's wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, Doctor, it's, it's also has given me a great honor to welcome um, lovely Elizabeth Kendall uh, from Melbourne. Um, good evening. You are actually in Australia, so we are having at the same time. It's just past 7 p.m. So good evening, uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Kendall. And good evening to you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I found that it's a, a great opportunity to have a doctor from Pennsylvania, USA, and having you from Victoria. Um, well, now in person, that I will just uh, say something about you, then I will give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and your background, and then we'll go ahead with uh, questions. But it gives me a great honor also to welcome uh, our Assyrian um, Muslim Alliance Deputy Secretary General, Mr. Irma Shaheen. Also, he will be with, uh, with us actually on the panel, uh, by the way. And also, I'm expecting actually Susie David. She's running a bit late. Uh, you know, she's uh, an attorney in a course, and she has so much to do. But she said that she is running late. But uh, I think she is here anyway. She 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 will be with us. I think she's on time. Um, Mr. Shaheen, good evening and welcome uh, to the uh, Alliance Show. Thank you, thank you, David. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Susek and uh, Miss Kendall, welcome to our program and uh, thank you for giving us uh, your valuable time. The Assyrian people are very thankful uh, for people like you who not only spread the word of truth uh, of our Savior, Jesus Christ, but also defend the persecuted Christian nations in the world, including the Assyrian nation, the founder of the Christian faith in the Middle East. It's a great honor to have you uh, on our program. Well, Herman, as you know, every time I go on Facebook, I see your face everywhere. Everybody has you on their site. <laughs> okay. You. Great. Look, what a wonderful uh, time. Uh, Miss Susie David, um, she's uh, actually uh, an advisor for the Assyrian Visa Alliance. Good evening, Susie. And um, we are also thrilled uh, to see you with us just on time, sweetheart. Good evening and welcome to the show. Can you hear us? Can you hear me, Susie? I think Susie, she's having uh, difficulties. Susie, uh, you are on mute. Can you unmute yourself? No? Yes. Susie having a problem. No sound. Okay. She might enter again anyway. Will uh, will be any chance just to give her a chance, uh, one minute, uh, possibly less than a minute. I hope she can make it, or she'll possibly rejoin again. <clears throat> well, uh, possibly she will have a bit of problem, but uh, doctor, um, um, it's a, so. It's an honor, actually, to have you once again in three months for the second time to have you on our show, the um, uh, Assyrian Alliance um, Australia uh, Life Program, which is we are running the show from home due to this COVID-19. And we are restricted, actually, to um, uh, some of the equipments, which is we had in radio program. But through the Zoom and the Facebook, uh, we've been able actually to attract so many actually uh, listeners and also uh, watching and listening to the program. Uh, Dr. Sosa, can you tell us a bit about yourself before we start? Uh, we know that actually, uh, you know, the um, founder and the president actually of the 
Sussex Association, and also you are, um, um, you know, an author of the uh, Assyrian um, uh, prophecy book. And um, also we know so much about you and you have interviewed on so many shows worldwide, actually, and especially so many interviews in U.S. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Because we have so many new listeners, actually, on our program today. Uh, and well, first you... of all, the uh, one thing far better than being on a program with you will be to be in person with you. And I'm really looking forward to being with you in Australia when this pandemic lifts and uh, spending time with the Assyrian people. I'm really looking forward to being down under with you. Uh, well, I was born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and my wife was raised in York, Pennsylvania, which is the other side of the state. So when we got married, we decided to compromise and move to York. And mm -hmm. That makes for a happy marriage. And um, uh, we've been married now 52 years, and my wife is a singer. And uh, God has blessed her in many ways, and uh, she is extremely supportive of what I'm doing. And my, my goal and my passion, uh, being that I feel called as an evangelist to preach the gospel uh, as far and wide as I can, I never saw years ago, um, some 30 years ago, when I was sitting in my study reading the book of Isaiah, and I saw this prophecy that had the name Assyria in it. And uh, th this is a terrible thing to say. I hope people understand it. I, I leaned back in my chair, and I was being facetious. But I said out loud, God, did you make a mistake? <laughs> and uh, because there are no Assyrians anymore. And that, that is how deep my ignorance was. And I did not pursue the subject. It kept pursuing me because that question kept coming to my mind. And uh, then eventually, uh, some 10 years later, I decided that I was speaking at a, a worldwide convention for a certain denomination. And... Uh, uh, I, I just felt compelled to speak on that. And my wife was not secure with that. Uh, she said, you know, she sung for many prophecy conferences for an organization called the Friends of Israel. And she said, I've never heard any prophecy speakers speak on that. Are you sure? I said, Diane, if you read it, a child can understand it. And so um, I did. And that's when a man came out of the audience and up on the platform. And he said, I... I've never heard anyone speak on that subject before, but uh, I, I have written two books on it. If you'll write the next book, I'll give you all my research. I am an Assyrian. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that I got chills. I thought I was watching Lazarus come out of the grave. And that was my entrance into the Assyrian experience. And it has grown now until um, I eat, sleep, and drink, and pray for the Assyrian people. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, look, uh, I think we have an opportunity. Susie, can you hear us now? I can now. I can. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I have a bit of a uh, it's, it's wonderful. That's what happens when your husband is an IT engineer, you see? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Susie, uh, I would like just to welcome you on our show, too. It, it, it's so nice to have you, darling. And um, I just mentioned earlier that Susie David, she's an advisor to the Assyrian Bissau Alliance, um, an activist Assyrian. Um, she has a record over 40 years of her hard work uh, and um, served the community, actually. Um, it's uh, so lovely to have you with us. Thank you. And David. also, uh, I know you are a, a close with both this beautiful uh, guest of us, our guest, uh, Ron Sussex, and also a wonderful lady that we are so close to her. Uh, and we became close with Elizabeth Kendall through the lady that uh, she is always in our heart, uh, Karen Boss from Christian Faith and Freedom based in Canberra. Um, she is an ambassador for the Assyrians. She always lobby and talk and write and help the Assyrian cause. Uh, so it's so wonderful, Elizabeth. Uh, to have you on our show. Can you please tell us a bit about yourself and also about the wonderful book, After Saturdays Comes Sunday? Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. 
Thank you, David. Yes, well, uh, the work that I'm mostly involved in is um, the writing of the Religious Liberty Prayer Bulletin, which comes out weekly to facilitate intercessory prayer for the persecuted church. So I've been monitoring and analysing religious freedom issues and persecution issues for over 20 years now and putting out a Religious Liberty Prayer Bulletin um, every week. So, of course, over the last, particularly the last decade, there's been quite a lot of work uh, for the Assyrian people and recognising the plight of the Assyrian people, especially uh, through recent days, but even further back uh, into the days of uh, Saddam, uh, when things got started to get a little bit more difficult uh, then. So that's what I do. And um, so my book, I've got one somewhere. Um, after I um, have it, this one here. Oh, hey. yeah. <laughs> I have one too. It's <laughs> wonderful book. Yeah, this is uh, your book. Um, um, I was honored to actually with five copies. So I uh, really have your book with me. And also I had some very special people, which is I send them a copy of your book. It's a wonderful book. Uh, we have actually mentioned and mentioned Hermes Shaheen and the Assyrians actually behind your book. Um, and uh, later on, we will go uh, through the book and the importance of this book and how the Assyrian uh, also could have um, one of these books to read and learn more about you and about the, um, uh, the book itself. Um, look, uh, just before I go ahead, um, Susie, I want to just give you an opportunity to say a few words to these beautiful guests of us tonight. Thank you, David. Hello to you. Hello to Hermes. But more particularly, hello to Dr. Ron Susak and to Elizabeth. I miss you. I haven't seen you for a while. We have to catch up, but with COVID-19, we can't get together. We've had some good times in some of the um, meetings that we've attended. Dr. Ron Susak, hi. Thank <laughs> you so much for, uh, for this book. I've read parts of it. I've only just received it recently. Thank you for autographing it for me. I feel very honoured. Um, and I've had an opportunity to glance through it. We'll go through it a bit more um, as we get into this meeting, but I hope it's not... What time is it there now? Early in the morning? In it's America? just past oh. five. <laughs> five we, we have a habit of keeping you awake when it comes to these interviews. Thank you for being with us. It's an honour to meet with you again on this, on this meeting. But it's good to see you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Doctor, uh, let me start with you. Um, well, yes, I do have a copy of your book here in front of me. Uh, thank you for, um, uh, you know, the shipment that we had, 300 copies of your book, The well, Assyrian a special, Prophecy. A special thank you to you for all the help you are in distributing those. I deeply appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, well, we'll we follow that. Well, uh, well, it's a non-stop. I just want to tell you, within the 24 hours, actually, I received the book, and the following day, actually, I sold 60 books, you know, like three, three, three cartons, you know, which is 20 in each. We're, we're going to hire big. you. Yeah, they were. And every day I do get calls, uh, you know, from uh, people and uh, you know, ordering one, can we come and pick it out? And I'll say, can I just deliver it tomorrow? Can I come right now, please? I'm desperate. I must have it today. Yes, you have no problem. So really the book is moving. Um, and uh, I just want to let you know, doctor, that um, we had two copies uh, given as a gift to the uh, San Narse uh, Assyrian Christian College. Uh, my aim see? was, of course, after, after your permission, um, they have uh, over uh, 700 actually students in that school and it's a newly built school uh, wow. in 2018. Um, so what happened, I said, it, it's good to have these books in the school library and also then if they need an order, they can order. And thanks to the staff straight away, as soon as they see the book in my hand, they said, please, one and two and three. And I went to the other school, the primary school, that called St. Hermes Assyrian Primary School. And I then, as soon as they saw the book, before I even give it to the library, to the principal, they got seven books of me. They said, do you have it? I said, yes, I had them actually in the car. So really seven books were given there. And wow. also I, um, on behalf of you, 
I have donated one as a gift uh, to the uh, library of the primary school. Um, and you see, actually, and then they were also asked actually to have a, a photo uh, with the deputy principal, mm -hmm. Mary Ismail. Yes. And then she has wrote something about book about yourself. And it was good. So, doctor, we have the books now in a hand. How important is every Assyrian or the average Assyrian that really can read the book to have a copy of this book? Um, it, it is my hope and prayer that every Assyrian that reads English will get the book. We are now preparing to have it translated into Farsi, uh, Arabic, Aramaic, possibly German. Uh, and we, we've had requests for that. And uh, that's going to be a big project, but we're working on that. But let me share with you one story. We have a young lady now who has joined our staff as a volunteer, and we hope that we're able to build her into a position, a paid position, because she's invaluable. But it all began not too long ago when she uh, dropped me a note. And she said that she was driving through the streets of Turlock, California, just cruising the radio, and um, suddenly she heard this man talking about Assyria and Assyrians. She turned up the volume. She raced home, got the book uh, online, read it. And uh, the thing that really grabbed my heart was that she said it's trans it had transformed her life. Mm -hmm. She was raised in Iran and her mother was a tremendous uh, soul winner. She was leading many women to Christ when she got a death threat, and that's what eventually moved them on to Austria and then to America. And, uh, and, and she said, I'll do anything to help you get this message out. And uh, as a volunteer, because she was off, she was working for the Austrian uh, consulate, and now she was off work because of the pandemic. And so I, I just called her to thank her and discovered that she has all the gifting and abilities that we need. And uh, so she's now working with us. And, uh, and, and what she's saying is, I finally found my identity. You don't know what it's like to be in Iran and people ask you, where are you from? I'm from Iran. That means you're Iranian? No, I'm a Syrian. What is that? Where are they? Well, we don't have a country. And she said, I, I, then I come to America and I'm trying to learn to be an American and to follow the American dream, but where's my identity? And, and so God used the book to really help establish her in her identity, uh, not only as an Assyrian, but her identity in Christ. And uh, she is just a, an absolute gift to our ministry and, and helping us get the word out. The, the reason why I am hoping that, that every Assyrian will get the book and then buy five or 10 more and get them out beyond the Assyrian world, my number one goal right now is to awaken the church worldwide and governments worldwide to the reality of the Assyrians because the enemy of the church has driven the Assyrians into obscurity for centuries. And the passion that's on my heart right now, and I, and I hope that it will go to further steps, but right now I'm, I'm striving and praying and working to see the Assyrians gain a face to be recognized, a name to be respected, and a voice to be heard. And because the Assyrians, I believe, are the bookends of the church age. They launched the gospel across Asia and led some 80 to 60 to 80 million people to Christ. And they were the bright light through the so-called dark ages, bringing philosophy and medicine and the gospel to the whole world. And then they were driven into the ground and driven into obscurity. And the, the thing that I hate the most is when I, when I would hear the news when ISIS was attacking, refer to them as minorities, never using their name, just the minorities were killed today. Mm. Well, a minority is a faceless, nameless, useless person to, to a society that is prospering. And so who cares if some of them are killed? Well, I was enraged because these are my brothers and sisters in Christ, the people of the prophecy, the people who are going to reign with the Messiah when he comes. And that's what stirred my soul to dive in 
And we need to reawaken the, the world to who these people are. There are many minorities suffering, but these are the people of the prophecy. And when they are raised up of God, which I think is very soon coming, the world is going to be blessed by God through them, as well as Egypt and Israel. Well, uh, thank you for that, Dr. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, can you add something? Can you say something? Or did you pick something from his um, uh, conversation? Uh, look, one thing that I really love in the, um, I haven't got the book yet, it's in the mail, but that I love from the prophecy from Isaiah is the fact that God calls Assyria my handiwork. <laughs> I, and I think that that is really important. And I think that's one thing that drives me to try to keep the church praying for the nation of Assyria. God will do it. It's going to be um, awesome. It's going to be miraculous. Uh, no one will be able to take the glory for it apart from God, and everyone will see it and recognize it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And I, I just want to add, there's a wonderful other prophecy uh, that I think is really relevant to, to this discussion, and that's the beautiful prophecy in, in Amos chapter 9, verse 13, concerning Israel. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that sows seed, and the mountains shall drip with sweet wine and the hills will melt. So you've got this picture of the harvest just accelerating to the point that no one can keep up with it. And I've got this wonderful sermon here by Charles Haddon Spurgeon, and he preaches this sermon on Amos 9.13 in 1860. And he says in his sermon, now you are aware that the land of Canaan used to be very fertile. It used to flow with milk and honey, but today it's a barren wasteland. It's barren, its valleys are parched, its miserable inhabitants gather miserable harvests from arid soil under Turkish rule. But yet the promise still stands. And I think here we are on the other side of that promise. And we look and we see, well, it's, you know, the, the land has now been re-inhabited and the de Israel has made the desert bloom. And of course, it, there is still more to come and that prophecy will uh, continue to be fulfilled. But, and I look at the situation with Assyria and I think, you know, we have to think a little bit like Spurgeon sometimes and think no matter how it's, how difficult it is to imagine and how bad it looks is the promise stands the promise stands and and uh, you believe god's promise and you stand on it and you move forward with your uh hopes in that promise you move forward in that in that strength well uh, hopefully with uh, a good friend like you an activist mm -hmm. and uh you know, uh, waking the people up, you know, with these uh, prophecy and these books, uh, I think uh, we will get there. Uh, Susie, can you tell us something about these two wonderful speakers that they started it so nicely? I, um, I mean, I admire both of you because um, each one of you is a champion in, in one fashion or another. And um, as I said, Elizabeth, I've had the honor of working with you and um, being with you and sharing ideas with you. And it's been one of my, one of the highlights of my, um, of my life, spending that time with you. And, and you're very inspiring and I've seen you in action and I love your book. Dr. Susak, I have been absolutely in awe of what I've been seeing about you. And now that I've got the book and I, I was really astounded that your book is not just about the prophecy, but there is so much about the Assyrian history. And particularly when um, you've also got a very wide cross um, uh, of, of, of various um, persons who have given testimony to your, to your book and to your writings, a great cross section of Assyrian community as well as non-Assyrians from all walks of life. And I find that um, so scattered and so amazing that, that so many people have been able to be drawn by what you've written 
in either philosophy, religion, history, um, and, and every aspect of it. I, I can't wait to read the entire book, but definitely um, the historical side of it is something that is close to, to us because we've gone through that history. It's our history. It's a history that is not known by everyone. It is a history that's downplayed, like you quite correctly said, we're often referred to as minorities in our own homeland, the homeland that according to prophecy should be, uh, should be ours. Um, and we are treated as minorities, as though we are a minority in our own land. And that is a, 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 that is a tragedy by definition. It's a tragedy um, in the United Nations rules and laws. It's a tragedy um, in history. It's a tragedy that the world does not acknowledge the difference between being the original people of the land and being the, uh, the minorities uh, of that particular area. Um, I um, have been discussing your book with a few people and I've, I've had feedback and some people will say to me, look, um, it's religion and it's Christianity that's caused, that's been the cause of our demise, of our downfall, of our persecution, of everything that we've gone through. And if it wasn't for our Christian faith, maybe we could have had something. We've just literally volunteered our necks for slaughter because of our faith. What do you say to people like that, as you or, or Elizabeth, to that sort of comment that is made quite often by our people because they have been so persecuted over the centuries that they feel that sometimes perhaps it's the Christian, it's our faith that's brought us to the perils that we experience today. Well, it is. It is our faith. Jesus told us it would be this way. And the, I have a message that I, I bring, and I'm, I'm building into a, another book for the Assyrians, and this will be part of it, and that is the theology of suffering. But if all we do is look at death as a tragic ending, then we're going to have a negative view uh, of our faith. It's not a tragic ending. The martyrs are under the altar crying out, when will we be avenged? And Jesus says, when the number is complete. There is a plan of God taking place. And you can kill a person's body, but you cannot kill their mind or their soul or their spirit or what they are. And you have not ended the impact of their life whatsoever. And according to Revelation, uh, it, it may be the martyrs that will be the judges throughout the millennial reign, judging. And uh, so God is a perfect and just God. No one suffers loss, but what there is a tremendous gain. And Tertullian said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And there's no greater statement to the world of the depth of the love of God and the great work of God in the Assyrian people, other than remembering that in the Old Testament, when they were a mighty military force, they overstepped the boundaries of God's authority, and that's why God brought them down. And now they have, they've gone from empire builders to kingdom builders, and that's totally different. Empire builders conquer and overpower and rule. Kingdom builders are humble servants who lift and give life. And uh, there's a price to be paid for that, but a price that has an, an incredible reward. And rather than saying we are the poor, most martyred church, we are the most honored church because we have spilt the blood as Jesus did on the cross. He died to take our sins away. We are dying to advance his message. And every time a person is suffering persecution or oppression or martyrdom in the name of Jesus Christ, he is advancing the cause and there is reward beyond imagination. God is God and he loves. And, and we are expressing that love by our losses. 
And God, there is reward beyond comprehension. And I, I want to encourage every Assyrian to look on their past with great honor and dignity, not with sadness and loss. There is that human side that is understandable, but we need to keep the divine perspective of this. Uh, think of uh, Jim Elliott, one of his... Um, um, uh, Nate Saint died along with Jim Elliott that day at the hands of the Aka Indians, and Ben Saint, uh, his widow is, or yeah, his widow is now communicating with me. Ben Saint was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania when I was a boy growing up. He was a song leader at Youth for Christ, and I talked to him one day about his brother's martyrdom, and he said, "Ron, my brother." And Jim Elliott and the three other missionaries stood beside that plane with high-powered rifles hanging off their shoulders. They could have defended themselves. They willingly never raised their rifles and allowed themselves to be speared to death. Jim Elliott was the one who said, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. Mm -hmm. Assyria, you're not losing the hand of God is going to, you are the ones who will be a third, along with Israel and Egypt, a blessing to the world. So we need to keep our eyes on the greatness of what God is doing, even in our suffering and losses. They are not losses. They will be rewarded. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shaheen, uh, I'm sorry. Susie, do you sorry, want to? I just wanted to know whether um, Elizabeth had a response to um, her response to, to add to what Dr. Susak has said. Mm -hmm. um, Go ahead. I actually had that Jim Elliott quote written down here because uh, <laughs> it came to my mind just straight away. But um, like my book after Saturday Come Sunday is built on that the the threat, the Islamic threat, that after the after Saturday, the day of the Jews, when we kill the Jews, will come Sunday when we kill the Christians. And in, my, in the last chapter, I, I speak on the, um, I write about the theology of the cross, Martin Luther's theology of the cross. So that the cross is not just a historic event. It's not even just what it achieved as atonement. It's also revelation in that it reveals something of who God is and how God works. Yeah. So we learn from the cross something about how God works. And what we see is that even when it looks, like God is dead and the world has won and all hope is gone, uh, appearances are deceiving and um, Sunday is coming and the day of resurrection follows the day of the grave. And I should think um, every persecuted Christian who hears that from, from Muslims, you know, after Saturday comes Sunday, I know it's been painted on, on churches uh, all across the Middle East by by. Muslims in Pogrom, uh, they should remember, yes, yeah, so after Saturday comes Sunday, indeed. <laughs> and mm -hmm. if they really understood what that, what that meant. But it's, it's a really important thing, I think, in these days, when the situation for the Assyrians is, is so dark, and their towns are in ruins, and their people have uh, been pushed out into exile, and it really does look like God is dead, and the world has won. But God is actually doing something. He is, he is not dead in the grave. He is at work. And he is defeating evil and he is turning it for good. He, is using, he used the cross, the worst thing in the world. He used it for his glory and for his purpose. And he will do the same. He will uh, redeem. He will redeem it all. And Sunday is coming. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Shaheen, do you want to add anything to this conversation? Well, or yeah. also, if you have a, a question to raise, it will yes. be great. Well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank Ms. Kendall, who have defended our position on many occasions, including uh, during a human rights meeting in Canberra and uh, by issuing many publications on uh, the persecuted uh, Assyrians in Iraq and Syria. And also she, was, uh, she has been a keynote speaker in our past events. Mm. And the same time, I would like to thank, uh, thank you, Dr. Ron, for such a fascinating book and initiative to bring awareness about the Assyrian nation and to shed light 
on our past uh, Assyrian biblical history, which has been manipulated in the past by political and inter-religious differences. How can we use uh, your book, uh, Dr. Ron, to benefit the Assyrian cause and what are the resources needed for that? Well, first of all, the reason why I went into a fair amount of Assyrian history and lifted up stories of some Assyrian people is because I want the church to fall in love with the Assyrian people. Because the church can get stuck in the Old Testament when Assyria was violating some of what God gave them limitation on, and they get hung up there, and they don't know the rest of the history, and they don't know the phenomenal story uh, of the, 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 the greatest evangelistic force we have recorded in history is the Assyrian people. In a real sense, the Assyrian people may be the mother church of the entire church of today worldwide because of the seeds they planted and spread all the way to the West, uh, and it just went off from there. Uh, and I'm not sure if I understood the second part of your question, but if I did, uh, if you're asking about the needs we have uh, right now, we, we want to do everything. Means. Yep. Sorry? Ways and means to spread the word. Yep. Well, bottom line, uh, we need resources in order to uh, get translations made. Uh, the former patriarch uh, blessed this project, and I so thank him for that. Uh, and if we, if we can come back to that in a moment, if you wish, because it was a, a valuable thing. But uh, he was the one who, when he first saw the book, he thumbed through it, and he smiled and looked up and said, please get this translated. This has to be read across the Middle East. And... Um, so that's going to take some resources. So if, if, if people can help us with resources, obviously we're going to need that in order to get the translation work done, get them printed, get them spread out. Uh, we, we are not in the money-making business. We're in the ministry business. And so uh, the whole project is to get the, the word out because awareness has to take place. And here's why that's so important in my thinking and as I pray. In this building of awareness, someday, this book, I believe, is going to land in the hands of the Cyrus of this age. What do I mean by that? Cyrus was the Persian king who had, had the uh, uh, Jews as slaves under him, and he said, no, we can't keep them. And he, he gave what may have been the largest cash gift of history, some economists say, to help the Jews go back and rebuild the temple, rebuild the walls, even gave them a military escort. The, while the Jews needed help to get home right now, that's exactly where I see the Assyrians. And somewhere, God is raising up a Cyrus. And that Cyrus will be in the position to be able to speak the word and give to, to Assyria the one thing she has needed now for 2,000 years security. That's all. As one uh, priest, uh, a Syrian priest said to me, he said, Dr. Ron, I, I hate bragging. I'm not bragging, but I'm telling you that if we have the security, we don't need anybody to build the nation for us. I know my people will have it built in 10 years. And, uh, and what a tremendous ally that would be to, to Israel to have uh, that kind of assistance 500 miles from Jerusalem, to have someone who philosophically and theologically is rooted in the same history. In fact, as everybody knows, Hebrew came out of Aramaic. And, uh, and, and so there's, there's already movement to begin to teach Aramaic even to the Jews so they understand the roots of their own language and their own culture. And so uh, the best thing we can do now is keep spreading awareness God is going to begin to handpick those people that he's been grooming. They may not even know it yet. He's been grooming them. And I, I, I sense in my heart uh, that, that it, it may be happening faster than we think. And my great concern is, how can we help the Assyrian people get ready? Because once that happens, you can't hit uh, Mesopotamia wondering, where do we go from here? We got to have the plan in place. 
Uh, let me just share with one, one quick story of what I mean when I say we never know how fast things can happen. Just this past week, Vice President Pence was to speak in an Assyrian church in Phoenix. And uh, they had my book all prepared to put in his hands. And in the last second, something came up and he couldn't make it. That's how close we came to this book, getting closer to the Oval Office. We don't know how and when. There's another thing uh, that's developing that uh, I'm not free to talk about, but let me say that it's happening, it's developing, and if it happens, God will privilege me to be in another situation that will begin to turn huge gears. Uh, and my role is simply to explain the story uh, and to awaken the right people who God has placed in the position to do things. So we're, we're not talking about something that, well, it's been 2,000 years, it's going to be 2,000 more years. We saw the Berlin Wall come down in a weekend. We saw the Iron Curtain drop in a weekend. When God moves, his arm is strong. And uh, uh, I, I, I feel that the time for the Assyrians is upon us. We need to get ready. We need to take this seriously. We need to widen the awareness because uh, some Christians, and we're trying to help them overcome this hurdle, have never thought of this, and they don't want to think about it because they're saying, all we're looking for is the rapture so we get out of here and we don't go through the tribulation. Well, and, and, and then they'll think, well, that's for the millennial, uh, so it's not for now. Well, Noah did not begin to build the ark the night before the flood. And while we know from the scriptures we're heading into a time of tribulation, that gives us no reason not to be building the kingdom because God's going to be building the kingdom right through the tribulation. Millions and millions are going to come to salvation. And it may be that God is reestablishing Assyria now so that the believers who will not be carrying the mark of the beast, the believers who would not be able to eat, buy, or sell because of not accepting the mark of the beast, do they all just perish? Or is God, God going to prepare Assyria now as a safe zone for incoming believers during the tribulation? I don't know. I can't prove that scripturally. But I'm sensing such a momentum, not from just me. My, my part is just a, a very small, but I sense God doing something globally. And I don't know what all of his purposes are, but that's a possible scenario. Thank you. Well, great. Doctor, can I just ask you a question just through this, um, uh, you know, information that you're passing? Uh, just something came in my mind. Doctor, uh, Beside actually this uh, beautiful book you have written, it's uh, just about uh, 300 pages anyway, and um, the Assyrian prophecy. Um, we need you also to be an ambassador for the Assyrians, for the plight of the Assyrians actually. And uh, we need lobby. We need to, to be uh, someone very influential and speak to the organization that they are really can put a pressure and bring this dream of homeland for the Assyrian uh, through a lobby, which is, uh, as we you know, and the whole world know, it, today it's a USA, America. They play a big role, especially in the Middle East. Uh, so um, a man like you, and with your background, and you also have an organization there and other Christians, how much you can help and how much we can really work together and help each other and, 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 and just to um, start something beside the book to be more effective. I am your servant. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a hero. The only reason why God is using me to this level in, in the Assyrian cause is because years ago when I read the word of God and it said that God chooses the thing that is nothing to bring to nothing the thing that is, God chooses the weak to bring down the mighty, and God chooses what looks to be foolish to bring down the wise. I raised my hand and said, I qualify. <laughs> I'm weak. I'm nothing. God, I understand it. I get it. You are God, and I am your servant. And in the recent years, he's, he's led me very clearly and very strongly to become a servant of the Assyrian people, 
when I met with the patriarch, I said to him, I'm here as your son and your servant, and I don't want to go any further in this project without your blessing, because I understand authority. Uh, you only act when God gives you the authority, and if you act beyond that authority, you're on your own, and you're in very deep trouble. And uh, so, I, I do know that God has revealed to me what Assyria needs to do and know to prepare. What I'm praying about now is simply this. I, I'm not going to engage in that until God gives me the right of authority through the Assyrian people. Uh, otherwise, uh, well, that's just my indicator that this is God. Whether I know what to do or not doesn't matter. Um, if I don't have God's authority, then someone else will have that authority and they will know what to do. I do know what we need to talk about in preparation to go back to Mesopotamia so that uh, when we get there, we, everybody knows exactly that, that everything is in place. Our mindset is the same. Our heart is the same. Our reason is the same. Uh, let me just give you one snippet of an insight into what I'm talking about. One area that needs to be talked about thoroughly and, and very carefully is what kind of a constitution are you going to write? Mm -hmm. don't, don't try to match America's. Remember, Winston Churchill said, democracy is the worst form of government. We just haven't found one better. Well, there is one better. Israel had it before she asked for a king. She had God. God is the king of the nations. The Bible says that over and over again. The closer a nation statedly becomes committed to the king of the nation and runs their law, their education, their society on, on the terms of God and the word of God, the more she's blessed and the more she functions. All right. What, uh, what will that look like in a constitution and how do we run that? So many things need to be thought through quickly and uh, then educated throughout the Assyrian people so that when we go back, I, I keep saying we, I, I don't mean to inject myself as an Assyrian, I wish I were, but when, when the Assyrians return, it's imperative that they understand some of these foundations and, and put together the, the kind of a society and civilization and nation that is what God intends. And that is, if she has nothing more to offer than being like the United States or Britain or France or any other nation, she has nothing more to offer the world than what we already have. But if she goes back and establishes a deep biblical principle and, and is stated as a nation for the glory of God and the advance of the gospel, and she now is the voice of the gospel as a nation, it can happen. It can happen. If it can happen to an individual, if it can happen to a family, if it can happen to a church, there's nothing that says it cannot happen to a nation. Has not God been pleading with the nations for, for millennia to come to me, seek me, come to me? Boy, here is a serious chance to go on display before the eyes of the world to represent the gospel, not only in word, but in building the, a state-of-the-art hospital that is ministering to the needs of Islam as well as Christians, to, to build the first university of truth ever established. I don't know of a university named the University of Truth that we're, we're not going to fool with this, the, the uh, malicious foundations of the sandy weakness of so-called evolution, which is nothing but a myth out of hell. But we're going to build on solid truth in the area of science and theology, you name it, the solid rock. This is a serious golden hour. Yeah. Well, Doctor, you can use the word of we because you are part of us and we, I'll make sure that you'll have a dual citizen, Assyria and... <laughs> so you'll have a dual <laughs> citizen, <laughs> right? When we have the country back. <laughs> Elizabeth, you too, darling. You'll have a dual citizen too. But can I just, uh, um, uh, Elizabeth, ask you this question? Uh, what we heard from actually... Um, Dr. Uh, Ron, so sorry. But in your book, the prosecution and the problem that we are facing in the Middle East and the influence of Iran and Hezbollah in, 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 in Syria and in, in Lebanon and what's happening in Yemen, and look at the Iraq destruction also, it's a part of you know Iran movement. 
And even in Iran itself, there's so much problem, but they are actually creating a big problem in the region and also the influence that they are putting actually on Hamas to uh, help the Hamas and to uh, also attack Israel, which is it's every day. What do you think, how easy it is for us in the middle of all this problem and all this, you know, killing and slaughtering and pushing the Assyrian Christians out of their land? What do you think, a miracle will happen or we need to work or we need to have more time or um, who can help more? What do you think from your experience, from writing these books, you should uh, have something in mind and what doctor actually said, What's coming up in your mind now? Well, I would say all of the above. You know, um, it will be a miracle when it happens, but it will happen because God works through his servants. So it's a matter of being obedient. Um, people have to be sensitive to the voice of the Lord and the direction of the Lord. They have to be obedient. They have to be courageous. They have to be prepared to die. And they have to step forward in, in faith. And... Um, God is doing amazing things. So, you know, Muslims are coming to faith in Christ in numbers unprecedented in all of Muslim-Christian relations. It's a completely new thing. God is doing something completely new. And the fastest growing church in the world, as we know, is the Iranian, is the Iranian church. So God is at work. And sometimes things appear to have happened very quickly when they've taken actually a long period of time. And sometimes things can happen quickly and take you completely by surprise. God's very good at taking us by surprise and doing exactly the opposite of what we think he's going to do. You never try to guess what God's going to do or tell him what he's, what he's going to do. He, he surprises us. His ways are not our ways. But we have to be obedient. We have to trust him. And uh, my first book, which is on Isaiah, the first 39 chapters of Isaiah, and it's very strong on that. We have to, Isaiah himself taught his followers, you have to walk differently to the world, walk by faith, not by sight. You have to trust, you have to look differently, not just, not just politically, but spiritually, and you have to fear differently. So you don't just fear what other people fear, you only fear the Lord. And that's what we have to do, and we trust God with the, West, with the rest. But, you know, I'm always looking for signs of hope. And I have to say, I've been, I'm being very interested to hear what you have to say, David, and her Muz regarding the new prime minister in Iraq, Mustafa al Kadimi, who's um, pretty, he seems to be very keen to rein in the uh, influence of Iran, to rein in the Iranian militias, to get um, them either out of the country or incorporated. Uh, to get the Iraqi militias back into the military, to get the green militias out of the country. He's now called for Syrians to please come back. And he acknowledged, I was amazed to see Mustafa al Kadimi acknowledge the Assyrians as the indigenous people of Iraq, the original people of Iraq. Mm -hmm. So this is really interesting to me. And um, this is very new. I mean, he's only been prime minister since May. Uh, he was really brought to the prime ministership through the protests against the Iranian influence. So I think this is a very encouraging thing. And this is something to be praying for and uh, praying that God will protect him, that God will give him maybe a little bit of a spirit of Cyrus in, in there, but just to be at work and uh, to pray that maybe God would use him and that it will be a good thing. Well, uh, um I'm trying actually just to have a song. It's an Assyrian song. It was actually um, videoed uh, in the incident actually of uh, ISIS in Nineveh and Khabur in Syria. It's a beautiful song and subtitle actually that has get actually translated the wording also in English. But uh, I just want to leave the conversation, Susie, with you and Hermes. It will take me. Um, some seconds or maybe a minute just to organize that song. I think I you will wanna, enjoy it. While you're doing that, David, just to respond to Elizabeth's very um, interesting comments, yeah. and I'm okay, sure that so. Hermes will have a lot more to say. Um, that's very true. Those, those remarks have been made. And the, the difficulty Assyrians always have is that we immediately trust um, positive 
um, hope. Uh, and unfortunately, history shows us that whenever those sorts of comments are made, even if they're written in a constitution, it doesn't take long before things change again. I mean, back in 1932, um, when they wrote the Iraqi constitution at the time, they actually constitutionally provided rights to the minorities of the land. And within months, we had the biggest massacre in Sameli and the surrounding villages. Um, every time a prime minister or a leader comes forward, whether it be in Iraq, whether it be in the Kurdish regional part, whether it be in anywhere else, it, it, it gives us hope, but we are so afraid to feel comfortable because of what we've gone through with these sorts of comments. And we don't know how lasting they will be. We don't know how politically supported they will be by the rest of the regions around. There's a lot of pressure by Iran um, on Iraq, and there's a lot of pressure by other countries and other states on Iraq. Um, not just on the Assyrian issue, but on other issues. So that's where we're at. But we are praying that maybe this time with divine intervention, it will be different. Hopefully that day is coming. But I don't hold my breath. I just take a sigh and go, please, God, let this be the final sentiment that will make it work. Will it really happen? And yes, there's encouragement coming forward that we have even our, our little autonomy. How far that will go, we don't know. I don't know what Hermes's views are about that. That's just my personal views, not the views of the organization. This is why it's so important too for, for us to be praying for our mission and for conversion amongst the at the moment, amongst Kurds, amongst Arabs, amongst Turks. Um, God is doing something new in the Muslim world that, is, that can't be denied. And that, that, that is key to everything. Because in history, whenever, in, forget, forget what, what the leaders say. Uh, I mean, like the, the Sultan in the Ottoman Empire, you know, he, he enacted the Tatamet reform. And he did it for political gain to get British support. And all the Muslims said, well, we're not going to do that and, and started massacring people left, right and centre. So the key to it is less the, the words of leaders, although the words of leaders are good to hear, um, but the, the change in the heart of the Muslims in the land. So there has to be an awakening where people are, are sick of war, they're sick of fighting, they want to live with their neighbours, and even more so, they want to know the Lord, the Jesus Christ that you know, and that makes you different, and that makes your society different from their society. So um, to me, the prayer for mission and for the salvation of Kurds and Iranians and Arabs is, is, in Turks is central to everything. Thank you. Hermes. Can you hear us, Hermes? It's muted. Have you, I think you've muted yourself. Hermes, you are in mute. You muted yourself, unmute yourself. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, well, <laughs> we are talking a lot about uh, a lot of uh, problems that we face in the Middle East. But uh, today the Assyrians are facing many other difficulties in their struggle to obtain the uh, international recognition and support uh, for their leg leg legitimate rights, whether it's in Iraq, Syria, or Turkey, or Iran. We are getting a lot of words of sympathy from uh, local politicians in the West, but when the matter requires to go further, uh, such as to raise a motion or uh, to go to uh, a to get a governmental stand on certain issues, we are met with excuses that we are not uh, united or uh, that we are small in number 
or we don't have enough evidence to support our case, uh, one of the uh, one of these uh, uh, scenarios is uh, to obtain, for example, recognition of the genocide committed by ISIS against our people uh, in Iraq and Syria. Uh, in your opinion, um, question is for both of you. Um, uh, how can you explain this situation, and how can we get more Christian advocates in the world? standing and defending our leg legitimate rights to exist among other nations in the world? How can we survive alone in the Middle East while facing strong waves of Islamic fanatism and invaders without support of the Western world? Elizabeth? <laughs> Well, to be honest, I think it's just a matter of, of we continue to do the work. So I've written my book and uh, I continue to, to call people to prayer constantly for the Assyrian people. Um, uh, Ron has written his book, which I would think would give the Assyrian people themselves so much confidence um, in their future. And I think we just keep working. We just keep working. You can you keep working with uh, with hope rooted in promise. So you, you hang on to the promise. You hang on to the promises of the suffering servant, the promises of the scriptures, the, the, the prophecies, and you walk forward continuously, um, uh, never giving up. But, um, and you know, just, just one day there's the, a breakthrough that takes you by surprise and you just keep praying for it. Um, there's a beautiful uh, passage in, in uh, 2 Samuel 5, and it's referred to again in Isaiah 28, uh, Baal Perizim, the Lord of the Breakthrough. David refers to um, for his God as the God of the Breakthrough, Baal Perizim, who breaks through his enemies like a bursting flood. And we pray for that breakthrough just to come. And I think it's going to be complex. It's going to be, it, it will involve a... Um, a breaching of the dam of Islam. You know, people are held in Islam in, in, behind this dam wall of fear. And the dam wall has been breached and it's a trickle at the moment, but it's getting, it's getting bigger and stronger. And I, I once I was in communication with a Coptic missionary, an Egyptian Coptic missionary working in the Middle East. And he said to me, this is 20 years ago, he said, if, the, if ever there is real religious freedom in the Muslim world, it won't be long before there's not a Muslim left. And I think, we're, I think it's there under the surface right now. And I think, I think that's the reason why there's so much panic amongst you know, the mullahs in Iran and amongst Satan in this spiritual conflict. Um, and as soon as, once, the, once, the, once things are becoming tense, that's when the battle intensifies. And when the battle intensifies, we know that it's actually serious. If, it were, if nothing was happening, uh, we could all go back to bed. But, but it's, I think the spiritual battle is very real and that, that Satan and the mullahs and different uh, you know, Islamic figures, they know that uh, they are facing something that they are not going to be able to stop, possibly in the... I would say in our lifetime, in the first part of this century, we're going to see massive changes in the Middle East. Thank you. I was, I was very encouraged to hear the, Elizabeth say that uh, they're involved in intercession. We desperately need intercessors because there's no question in my mind that the same God who performed 12 of the greatest miracles the world has ever seen to get Israel out of Egypt is going to be the same God to perform the miracles needed to get Assyria back home. And uh, I, I'm in this for a great reward. Now, I'm going to tell you what it is. Uh, and I've told God this privately many times, so I'm not, I'm not saying this to be impressive. I'm just telling you the truth of what I've said to God when no one else hears. God, here's what I'm asking for out of the labor that I'm investing, and that is, I want to see your will in heaven that you established in the prophecy, your will in heaven established on earth that you may be glorified. That will be all that I want. And, uh, 
and it's going to demand intercessors. Some people pray. They say a few things to God, and then they move on. Uh, there are uh, people who pray in spiritual warfare. That's good. That's important. But intercession is a whole different level of prayer. That's when you personally enter into the agony of the other person, as Jesus entered the agony of the human race. He came to become like us, not in sin, but in our, our trials and difficulties. He was tempted, tested, tried in every way as we, yet he never broke, never fell into sin. That qualified him to go to the cross and pay for our sins, to remove our sins as far as the east is from the west, bury them in the deepest sea, to be re remembered no more. And, uh, and he was an intercessor. He interceded for us and redeemed us back to the Father. The church, if we can find the intercessors, it's all over but the shouting. They are the ones who will take on the spiritual war in the heavenly realms, and they will not give up until the victory is here. That's what an intercessor is. And uh, uh, so that's a vital part of this. And I, I think that Elizabeth is right. We're seeing the early signs of that. We ought to be very encouraged because there are amazing things happening in the Islamic world. And uh, God, is, God is sovereign. He is capable of doing anything. Is anything too hard for God? No, it's not. When God moves, uh, as Elizabeth said, he often moves through people. And uh, the Bible says that he, um, uh, he covers his footprints. Why does he do that? He does that because he gives everybody a choice. Did God do it, or are you going to blame it on a human thing? And if you and and so we all face that choice when God performs. For example, uh, we have the miracle of the parting of the Red Sea. We have people who say, "Well, that was a time when the sea was down, like the whole Egyptian army drowned in six inches of water." I mean, come on, get with it, folks. But uh, everybody has a choice. Did he actually part the water, or was it just some natural phenomenon? Well, the non-believer says it's a natural phenomenon. But the believer sees who it was. It was God who did this. It is God who made the prophecy, not me, not any of us. It is God who will fulfill the prophecy. We are simply his instruments, and our focus is on God and what God is going to do. And I have to say the a reason why I'm greatly encouraged is because I see so many indications, not that my book or anything else is beginning to make this happen, it's, it's, it's as though it is going before me. Jesus Christ is the polished arrow in God's quiver. What is an arrow? An arrow is the piece of the armor that goes out before you to destroy the enemy before you get there. The sense I have is that God is way ahead of us on this. All we're doing is catching up and observing what God is doing, and we're writing about it, we're talking about it, and we're encouraging. But this is a time... Um, I, I want to say this, this is very important. I have prayed many times, God, please don't allow me to be part of awakening a new hope in the Assyrians that gets dashed again. They've had enough of that. God, and so I've joined the, the teams of the intercessors because I can't pull this off. It is only God who can do that. But I'm seeing a lot of evidence now, more than ever, that uh, God is the one in motion doing this because it's, it's like the arrow is going out before me. The doors are opening that no man could open. And, uh, and it's not to elevate me. It's, it's God glorifying himself to accomplish what he said through Isaiah he's going to do. Well, thank you, Dr. Ron. Thank you. We, we as a Syrian, we have great belief that uh, one of the reasons of our survival of this nation is due to our belief. Yes. We, we are a believers, and uh, we fell victims of so many genocides in the middle of the Islamic fanatism, but we managed to save ourselves or save our generations that come to the West, and we can speak freely now, uh, you know, even though we are still worried about our people that they are still at home, but uh, we are trying as much as possible to be open to the uh, Western world so that they know about us and get uh, support for our cause. 
So thank you very much for such a wonderful words of encouragement and faith from such a good friends for our nation. Thank you. Doctor, thank you. let me, uh, sorry, doctor, let me take you again back to the book. This book, how important it is actually, I mentioned earlier, uh, what's your message actually to the people uh, or Assyrians in Australia to have this copy? Because well, we have 300 copies, uh, we advertised it. Um, uh, Elizabeth, you'll have your copy actually sometimes next week. I, I mailed you a copy last Friday, and also I mailed one copy to Canberra, um, Karen Boss. Um, so uh, hopefully you will have your copies. But yeah, but your message to the people in Australia, um, the importance of this book, uh, and, and, and you know, uh, it was amazing, you know, when you ship these books, uh, they arrived here, and then we had some problems and customs, and, and then I received an email within 24 hours, they said, if you don't reply to this email, the books will be taken and destroyed. And it just broke my heart, you know, after all this time, uh, you know, the shipment, the cost, and all this problems, I said, oh no, you know, and then when I emailed you and I had that letter from you, and then following by a few other emails, finally, I just prayed. And I said, look, God, help us. This book is very important for us. All the way, you know, it's been shipped uh, to Australia. Now it's in the hand of customs, and now you're having a problem, you know? Um, and then uh, after the email, I managed actually, you know, just speaking to a few good people there. And they said, okay, um, um, it's a matter of actually time. It will take a week. We'll give you an answer. And I said, look, it's very important. It's been already a couple of weeks in the customs, you know, and, and these books are very important for us. And they said, we'll let you know, uh, but possibly by end of the week, you will receive the books. And then suddenly I received a message an hour later that uh, your, books, your books are in a way delivered by two o'clock, you'll receive the book. And I was told actually in a week time, you know, so I said, oh, thank God, you know, the, the prayer did work, you know, and we get the book. So it wasn't easy getting the books. And then the distribution is again, not easy, you know, calling people, ordering different places, and I have to drive and make sure everyone get his copy. Uh, but it's important actually, I just want your message to the people and the encouragement just to have a copy of this book. Well, I really appreciate your sharing that. Um, and I want to say that obviously this book is not the Bible. Uh, however, I will tell you that I have never paid such a price <clears throat> to write a book uh, in battling powers of darkness that did not want it written, in pleading with God, what is the next chapter? Where are you going with this? Guide me, lead me and uh, going to bed with uh, serious thumping headaches from research uh, because when ISIS struck, I felt the time is now that, you know, that I really felt the heavy hand of God on me. This is the time to act. And uh, I was pouring long days uh, staring at a computer screens and uh, researching and, and getting on the phone with the, the Assyrians that I had come to know and learning and developing <clears throat> and so I really feel that uh, while it's not on the, the level of the Bible by any means, <clears throat> I really feel that the book was spirit-led. And uh, the things in the book, I, I have to say that now when I read it, I don't even recognize myself as, as the author. It's moving me. And uh, so I felt I feel strongly that the Lord led the writing of this book. I, I feel that he is, he, he is going to be speaking to many hearts through the book and beginning to pave the way, to open the way, uh, first of all, for the preparation that I've been talking about. We need spiritual preparation. We need uh, political uh, preparation, all kinds of preparation. And we have got to be careful not to get over out over our skis and ahead of ourselves. But uh, that's why I think we need to move quickly. Uh, I'm hoping and praying that God may, if, if I'm to be that person, I'm, I'm praying earnestly that God will open the way that I'll have that validation through the Assyrian leaders so that we can begin to meet in global meetings to discuss these vital issues and pray through them 
so that when that day comes, and it's going to come uh, by the hand of God, it's going to open, and, I, and that, I'm talking about the return to Mesopotamia, and I have to tell you that deep in my spirit, if God leads me into any position in that, uh, in negotiating with political leaders and so forth to make that happen, for me, there will be no compromise whatsoever. No, no compromise. It's not the Assyrians going back to compromise and blend in here, blend in there. Every time Israel did that, she lost. And Assyria is uniquely called of God to be its own nation. You vet who comes and goes. You determine those things. You're, you're, this is not an alliance. The only alliance that there will be will be the alliance under the Messiah with Israel and Egypt, and that will prove to be a blessing to the world. But we have to understand, and by the way, everything we're talking about for Assyria must happen as well for Egypt. The Lord has not led me in that direction yet. That may fall to someone else. But right now, the focus, I think, from the Lord is on Assyria, because Assyria uh, has enough experience of 2,000 years of suffering in Jesus' name without betraying and walking out on Jesus. That's a powerful statement, and heaven honors that. And I think that this is the hour that God is going to begin to do some, well, already is beginning to, to do some amazing things uh, in the Assyrian people. Um. Thank you, Doctor. Look, um, I can see that uh, we really are um, over an hour in this uh, interview. Um, it's, it's wonderful to stay another hour with you guys, but I know you, you are already tired, wake so early, maybe four o'clock in the morning. You have your breakfast four o'clock, so I don't know what time you wake. And um, Elizabeth also busy. What's your last word, Elizabeth, uh, for tonight? Oh, oh, look, I wasn't ready for that, just to be honest. One thing, one thing I would like to add, though, uh, about the spiritual conflict involved in writing the book, I had a very similar experience. I think it took me actually years to recover from writing the book. And two years ago, I was speaking at a conference in Hungary on um, being a voice for the persecuted church. And in one of the sessions, I shared the platform with Mindy Belts, who wrote, the author of They Say We Are Infidels. And afterwards we went for a walk and Mindy just asked me, she said, how did writing the book affect you? Did it have an effect on you? And I thought, I could just sense what she was saying. And I said, well, yeah, it, um, it chewed me up and spat me out. It, it left me completely drained and it, uh, it's been really difficult. And she had exactly the same experience. And it just goes to show the level of spiritual conflict that is in, involved in bringing Assyria back to life and bringing God's word. There is a huge amount of spiritual conflict uh, involved and um, we need to get people praying. And this is one reason why like, this book is so important because it shows people the degree to which they can have hope and they're not just praying, oh, I hope, I hope, but it's really, it's the promise. It's a promise. They're not just hoping into the, into the void. They are praying with faith in the promises of God and uh, it's really, really important. Thank you for uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, uh, Elizabeth, I, I personally would like to thank you on behalf of the SMSA Alliance and um, AUA. Uh, Australia um, uh, live program. Uh, thank you sincerely for years of your uh, support and whenever we need you, you are there. Um, and for all these beautiful books that you write and the statements that you make, uh, you are um, a great person and a friend of the Assyrians. And we're looking forward for many more years to come to work together until we achieve the ultimate aim which is uh, a homeland for the Assyrian. I thank you sincerely. Uh, doctor, uh, I just want to have your um, last statement, last words. Uh, what do you want to say? Uh, it was an honor to have you on our show. It was wonderful, and it's always wonderful. We'll have more uh, interviews with you because um, it's so lovely. And I just want to sit and just listen to you for hours and hours. Such a great speaker you are. Uh, God bless you, and God bless you for all the work that you are 
doing and um, the friendship that you built between the Assyrian communities um, worldwide, actually. I can see that you have friends in Europe, America, Australia, everywhere. And it's all because of this book that uh, people are amazed, you know, with this book. So just your last words uh, and um, to give you a break and have a rest. I don't know, you're going to go back to the bed or have another breakfast? I don't know really what are you going to do. <laughs> well, let, let me say that the one concern that I have uh, and the only negative feedback I had on the book, and it came from very few people uh, that were concerned that I was trying to make them evangelical, to leave the church to be evangelicals, because in the book I talk about being born again. Being born again is not an evangelical, evangelical idea. It came from Jesus. Mm. And uh, we all need to understand what it means to be born again. Uh, and so uh, to study John chapter 3 is extremely important uh, because uh, Jesus made being rebirth uh, key to entering his kingdom because we were born with the, the nature of Adam. And that has to be removed at the cross so that we now are born of the Spirit of God, and we have the heart of Jesus Christ in us. And that is not an evangelical idea. The evangelicals are simply mouthing what Jesus taught. And so I want the Assyrians to know, I'm not asking or encouraging any Assyrian to leave the Assyrian church whatsoever. I'm saying, let's find Jesus in the Assyrian church. And uh, you were the people that launched the gospel and uh, God is still with you, and uh, now is the time for us to understand the gospel in depth, because that's the message Assyria is called of God to present to the world as a nation. What a high honor. Please understand that the United States had that opportunity and blew it. The pilgrims in the 1600s who first came on the Mayflower to America wrote a compact, and in that compact they said, we are doing this for the glory of God and the advance of the gospel. It was about a hundred years later that we wrote the Constitution and began with three words that undercut that, we the people. No, it's not we the people, it's God Almighty who is the king of the nations, who is the decision maker of the, of the nations. And this is the great opportunity that Assyria has to bring up in a very dark world to reflect what it means to be spiritually born through the cross of Jesus Christ and his resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit and to walk as a nation in the ways of God. I'm telling you, the world is in desperate need of such a witness. And you are the people more than any nation that is in line to have that happen in the very soon coming days. And I am here to work with you in every way I possibly can. And please get the book, please get a dozen of them, pass them out. You've got to help me build awareness. And we need to awaken the world to who you are and God's role for you. God bless you. A uh, very special thank you to Mr. David David. Susie, wonderful to see you again. Hermes, great to see you again. And Elizabeth, I can't wait to meet you in person. God bless all of you. Um, thank you. Mr. Shaheen, your last word for these beautiful guests of us, um, well, Mr. Elizabeth uh, Kendall and Dr. Ron Susak. Uh, Dr. Susak and Ms. Kendall, thank you both for your uh, words of wisdom, faith, and encouragement, which our people deeply need. Thank you for giving us uh, your valuable time. God bless you for uh, choosing such a great path. Dr. Ron, we are looking forward to see you soon in Australia by the will of God. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, lovely Susie, your last word for uh, this beautiful guest. I just want to say thank you again. And I want to thank God for the fact that the Isaiah prophecy and our Lord's um, prophecies, uh, which the Assyrians have lived through and quote day after day and have uh, lived with this prophecy, with the hope that that comes out of this prophecy all their lives, in all our speeches, in our lectures, in everything that we ever do, 
the Isaiah prophecy is always repeated. What gives me hope, and I thank God for that, is that it is enlivened in other people who are not Assyrians. And we are hoping that non-Assyrians can, can assist Assyrians in being those champions that often Assyrians, uh, perhaps through their uh, constraints and various other uh, limitations, are not able to spread out there. So I'm hoping that this book can bring that awareness not just to the Assyrians who will be obviously um, uh, uh, encouraged by the fact that there are others that, that believe in what we believe, but also in non-Assyrians who will see that it's not just the Assyrians that live with this hope, but that there are the Ron Susaks and the Elizabeth Kendalls who, who also are aware of it and are prepared to endorse it. And for that, I thank you and I thank God. Thank you. Well, uh, Dr. Ron and Elizabeth Kendall, uh, once again, thank you very much and, and God bless. Um, um, I think um, you can uh, leave the, um, this uh, meeting. Uh, we will have- What happened uh, to your more... song, David? Sorry? <laughs> what happened to your song? Ah, my song. He couldn't make uh, it. I had some difficulties, some problems. Uh, yeah, halfway. I couldn't actually play it next time because possibly <laughs> we'll have uh, quite a few more um, uh, interviews with uh, Dr. and Elizabeth too. But uh, we, we need to stay a little bit longer, me, Susie, and Hermes, just to give a brief uh, outcome of this interview in Assyrians for those whom actually didn't understand that they are in the Middle East or Eastern European countries or part of the Europe, which is they, they speak French and German and Assyrian, which is uh, the second language. Uh, so I, I thank you and God bless and hopefully uh, we'll meet again. And doctor, we can't stay. wait to see you. We can't wait to see you in Sydney, Australia. As they say in a certain part of the world, might, I'll see you down under. Thank you, Mike, <laughs> and have a good morning. <laughs> For you. us, it's a good night, but a good morning. <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you very much, darling. Bye -bye. Have a good night. Yeah. Okay. Well, Shamane, Mughibbe, Akhdi Lohon, Pshame, and Katum Zimlam, Billy Shana, and Gisnaya, Garrett, Trepper Soap, or Abadie, Mukrata Susie, Echi, and Ati, or Mosachi, Hamindi, Sura, and Masitunwa. مقرويتن و دو خلاصة يعني مو برملوخون مو ديلوخون وهربيضا تا بغزايد ما قلوتا وهمزمتا وإيقارا دينا مغزويتا أنتا عطوريتا تروا فرصو بي عمو بريشاوة لن إلزبت كندل إطلاخ بلدو تبيو كل إيما طليبخ منو جمايات متوي ودو كان ديازا همزمة بشمت أنتا عطوريتا وبرمان دينا تيو قومياتو كتابة دي لكتوتة قداها كتابة دي لبكتابة باسط آتراية وشمت ميقرا هرمز يمتخرتها لأخ قيادتي ولا آتراية بكل أصور ويوليات وشقليات وإكنيات مو مسيط خامن دي سورة أم بس ما لأخون آتي خرطة ميقرا هرمز يخامن دي مسيط أنا رابا بغداين بصاخن قد فرسوبة مغ دكتر سوساك ومخ ميقرتة إليزبت كندل دي إلى بي أستراليا Dr. Ron Susak, Ilemen Uktanum Khidid America, in a Sandanet Dahahivi, at Meletan Vedora Dora Hitelebio. Ahivid Miuta, Budyarta al Atran, al Bed Gosan, Ilaha Hashrara. O Achran Alturae Chiech, Betar Betash Eatat, Hemanuta. Uhemanuta lexubno lexupio, open vitela sabat et pishak prima uktile guraba rachtet tarach. Lela kadian lazum uwajib et hanasha mahron susak and mah Elizabeth Kendall et tani lambut anankayut et hemanutam sub achangmirach the hemanuta. Uher ach pukidle et aturai ina. لا أختي شريانة رابا من ديانة خينيجو تشئيتها رابا مردوتيات خينيجو تشئيتها إنه إنه أبزة 
you know, obze mahadiana or shariana et hemanutam, she heta, the presto, gavet medencha asia up bid marua. Kadi shuprada hamzamta, shuprada jvechta, e let horsupid lena autorai, brashana, the anankayutat hemanutidian, anankayutit hividian, anankayutit. De Bautet Itlan, Bauta Slotet Itlan, Et Hayama Peshach Mudurre, Al Arturo, Avilan, Aha, Atra, Har Achmere, Doctor Susak, Lad Abachvishe, Mena Menchino, Hayedach, Behoyado, Ushlama, Inad Avilan, Avilan, O Atro, O Uprat, Iledian, Arturait, Amsach. Odach Shultana Gavo at Amsach Marchatachle um Hadachle Kadeo Mindit at Aturai Hamenibi, Ila Himanuta, Ila Tosh Etant, Ila Mordutan. Kadi Akhtara Il Anankaya, Lachi Aturai Parilo, Basima Raba David, Umir Rahormus, O Federation of Huyadat Australia, Huyadat Hivilaios Australia, it Shkiltil aha pasulta, luptula aktavat, persali gumiletan, u persala kadanit lena, gout miletan. It chazi, it belkit ab hamabua, it hajechta hamabua tivi, ujur at kahine, it lena aturaye, it zavigi ach ampar supermach, Dr. Ron Susak, or Elizabeth Candle, a la belted la rama ahamzam ajvechta. Um the Hina Katradi Il Raba Anankaya Ilat Raba Gashimir, Doctor Susak, Uhine, Mirana, Achangana Budaich, Achamanane, Leatach, Allah Iman, Bit Avidla, Bit Mavidle, A Munkinuta Katan, Belkit Kemach Kedam to Hapha, Ujaba, Ujaba Lele Vedderman, Mintachmento, Hemanu to Dien, Ugaric Avach Dire. Abachdire, Minkulha Ulha, et in Dana Matia, Amsach, Orachtama, Avilan Kanunishatasaye, Avilan Ha Plan, Hapulan, et Dahi, Marchatachla, Homelandia. Practiced you my Kulam Pelhan Kado Hanisha, Nisha Ile, the Dera Al Artur, Avilan Atrigiana. Hagehita Basim Rava. Basimta Hatan Umta Susi, Abinirnam Liktetwa, Ravashola etwala, court cases at Lach. بتفقيات إطلاق مريزيات إطلاق إنه أو خبخ أم تنايا مودة غيلة قد بزوتها مدر أتيت ومطي بضانة وشوقت لشول جانا غجي الشركة هاية أباتي خاسامة قدها تفقتا سبب إطلاق شوفة رابا جورة كسلا ويوتها التخمينيات خيالة وبقارة قدها تفقتا وأها تفقتا رابا غديلي تمصيلة أب إليزابيت كاندل قد هوايا ومنيني من سبب بدزوتها أب بين قد ريشة مياقورة ويخ قب الخنان وخلمت دي لوادة قومتان زي من أخنا قدا أمتا أطريتا يارت ريشخ ويالبخ قد داخي هاويلا خرواته وداخي هاويلا ناشئة تتلو خيلة وإنا خقالة خيلانة قدنية براسة يوت أدخلو قربة وأدخلو خرواته سبجارت مر شخلو قد مياقوريخ وقابوليخ وقتلو شوبه كسلان آت فقتا وطلت ينطت من تراوي قورتا شدر تلا إيميل قدي مدر بطيانا ملتا منتا قد ديت متوي قدا قال بتهوين من دوا دكتور بغزاين قد كما أنا ناش مصيانينا والقوم الدرغينا إنا كما بيتاينا مدر بطيانا منتا وآني هلا دخت مرد أخ من خافينا سب مغزي الخبة إقارة ومارومي وخل خضرها الله يعبني سب أهد فقته بألف ناش بغزاينا يشل الدنيا وبتخزيلة وأهد فقته جي عايف شقلة لقاط منه بتمبل خالق جرابة كونفرنس خينا الديو سو أنا كل إن التخمينات الشابيرة بدزوتة يعني أنا وميقرام هرمس وشابتر لخ وبأدفايز دي أخ تحمشة يوخ وشقلة وهم زمخ ما يخ تخمينات وخيالة قصت ام تا عطرت یاد ریما الخدارها ات حکم و اطرافات و نشی دیه ات ماسخ ماتخل زدکن 
كل امواتي اينا مطي الزدقي بخرواتي بدوستي بيطاني بلبي اتمصي انا نيخب نيخب باني لكيس ديه ات امنتي تلدانا بشتلا حقوتي يولتا بهي وي وين بهي وي وين قد امتن بطريشة وشوتاسا وجبان خينا ميقري الناش وميقري الجبان وميقري الشوتاسا وميقري ان تخمنيعة الشابيرة اتماسخ ما تخل داو نيشة بوش الله يا ابشلهم بسبارة وخ الله اتخخومي اللي بلكت قرابة اينا انا هموني وانهم مني وقم خمشيشن بيو قد اخو محربات اللي اتوتا ونطاطر اتارو شغلة قوتا ميقر هرمز هل انات خيالوخ تخمنتوخ جيشكتوخ لدنا تري فرصوفة لداها خلصة الدين بس معروف إيه إيه تمجد خاي قارة ربا قورة قديا قد خالت خا فرصوفة مصيانة قد لا أخشي همزوم أنا بواص الدين إينا أبز بلاخ أنا كلوش أنا بتقصة الدين بدراي أنا خاهيوي قلبت آتورايا آتورايا قر يطي أن لينا همزوم خامن دي ما يومين جاني همزوم أنا أم دي تيلي في شضية بديان بضايت بالتشئيت الديان احنا اختي التخوير يو اهولت يو قصت وظلمية بخشاو غيانا قد خينا بريقي واخيان ليو اخيك مناشي انا قاية يا كامندي اينا ايضان بالضارت الكل مندي تي لصيرة بناشوتا بغزاية وتشمع وتراية البلاطة طامة من سبب احنا نتلان تشئيتا اتلن ويتا هيمانوتا خيلانتا قد احنا نودي يوما كل يوخ الاقلاتا عاقل ويرا واخ جرابا ظلمي جرابا فرماني جرابا قصة اينا مدري اه هيمانوتا الديان الى خميتا من جو دن ديوي تشالوج التخوي امبي لقاوي تينا جربة پربسيلا قد قطيلا من كل جبانة بريشايد جو دي جانسايت تدويلا شيت واشا قامه الفا وطمو خمشصة أمتن بلتا وبيكا القدية من كل جبانة شيخة والله برامو عاملة وبرملون منه إنا مدر لمصيلون برقي لقامو سبب خيلت مريا عليها إيوه منه يقول لخا خيلة قاتي قد تمصيلون بي ألفا جانات تري ألفا جانات مضري لخيلة تركيا زبطنينون كل طوران خجخي تمنيد القردايا ربيلون دي باتا آه إيوه خيلة خيلة على هاي يا وقا من لت الدين قد مصيا خميالة جانو سو أخنا دوزوتا آه خيلة إتلان آجا باروتا إتلان أخشي هي ودية رابا خخا جي زبن وايلا من سبب أن أهولت وجاونايت جانا زي إتلان كتر رابا موودنا أنا قصته إنا مري علي بايلا إن لا بايلو أنا من شو رايت بريتا شو رايت أوريتا شو رايت كتاوة قديشة هم زومي لباست آتور وكل كتاوة أوريتا إي لباست آتور ومري على ويدو وقاطيت ايدو بس لخ اخنا اي وقتاما اختي دانا بايلا اخنا او خصير وفوضى اخنا ناويلا هيمانوتا خيلانتا لا انا ناشي ويلا هيمانوتا مغزيلا اخنا قالك اويلا اي هيمانوتا سب همزوما باصا اتس اورز اتس اس في ويلا ان من ديانه ان همزميات الدين ماري انا ناشي بوش بدري هي وقيرت وخبا جو ابن امتن وأبيتم بسيمة بريشايت داتن خاتن سوزي قد شرك لها أمانو ديو يطن دانا خشقيلا لان شولانا خرابة إنا خينا موادر أنا بين أخشي مدين قد خاتن سوزي بقام دانا هم زمو لان خدشا بدن كتر جوانا يد أخنا إتلان قد شبتت أتيا بخيال دالا بهم زمخ يو خرزة بركة الترس عطة أنا أخوالة وكنا يعطي جوانا يد خيادة ولا يد مصبي يخلو اینا خیلی علاقه شمان مغبی جی باین امرن قد شواب یا خد اطفا قد وایل خد پخت تایلند بی رامینا جاجو من آریزونا آمریکا قد ایلا ام دبرانت سیفو سنتر اسیریان جنسایت و ریسرچ سنتر جو آمریکا ای پلخ من صبری آتمن ایلا ام دبرانتا ریش صیتا سیفو جو آریزونا من خاتن شمونی قد ایلا ام دبرانت خشوت آپوتا و خد فقط رابا سودان تبت هوا رامینا ایل شرشو من استرالیا زیا استرالیا ای که من دا استرالیا پلیت من ناشی جباره ای که ایازی مدر ایشکلی مشتلانیات خل خانه شدیده تو میگرت سوزی آدت لیانا خازر مدر آتی و تو میگر هرمس و آنا و رامینا جاجو قد آواهات و کل لخنا اتلاعی قاربیه 
Babo, o yemo vshan dav il babo, dav jajulele. Yeah, vshamo ila yemo. Yeah. So, Thailand pakta, but genocide, or recognition dina, shkiligu Arizona, state of Arizona, o upilhane, o pasoliate. Pivi wen kat bit kabli, shayimel shudur fila khikma, nukzubaya, o khikma, bukarubaya, kule bit kaznu khil ala haraba, bilgilam dana sholane. این اخش باید نهضت دیانا خشوا و اطلاع ترویشی بلوایا ساعت را قدم تلوایا کسله کسلان مدروایلا ساعت شوا قدرت هد فقط هد آد خلا خروج را به شابیر خیلی نبته و خمریز قطعه خون شمان و پرچان و بغب بغزای من ال فیس بوک خ آل مرا با جورا ویرله اتی هی وی اشکالو خون پیدا وی طرانا من خوشیات کل دهها خروج او خروج خیلی آتی یعنی خروج خورز دعور دیو خم قروی قدی او خون ات ایلام مضیتا او مر عشتا او دریت او روحا او امتنیتا جو جور او سور ات ایا همش خویا خدای خیتا من جیبی او جیبت قالت خویادا های تون باسی مرا با کل خون پرچان او شمان مغب دختم ریب أنا همشة جميلة وأن بتفلخ ولي كالغ من بالخانة أم تنايا حل آت يوما بان خنن وخطا جنن وآتقتا آه إلى هي مانوتا وآه الميشن وآه إلى خلما آه خلما بتآت الإتوتا بشقنا خن كله خم شينا بيزمرتا خارتا ات أوجم بتسامو مدرينا دمعة ودمعة خزمرت خبر مرابا باسیم میگر هرمز شوقم شنا ال شمان مغب سوزی هرمز تیم 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 Thank you. 
Yeah. Hey. 